Hello, my name is Jessica Wagner. I am a student at the University of Florida, majoring in Health Education and Behavior, and this is a presentation on getting to know Erica Anderson, a health educator. Erica Anderson is a health and wellness coordinator at the Verizon Wireless Corporate Office. Her educational background consists of a Bachelor's of Science in Health Education and a Master of Science from the University of Florida. She is MCHES certified, which is a Master Certified Health Specialist. Her employment experience consists of a health and wellness intern at Verizon. While attending UF, she was a personal trainer for Corporate Wellness Division. And now she is the co-senior health and wellness coordinator for Verizon. Erica is also responsible for the testing, implementation, and upkeep of WellConnect Benefits Portal. This is a web-based program that manages all wellness, motivational, and health education programs. She also develops health and wellness center budget and the acquisition and purchase of equipment. She is also responsible for membership growth and sales while being tasked with the interviewing and the onboarding process of new interns. Some of Erica's other responsibilities are implementing and coordinating About You Day. This is a health fair that focuses on employee health, wellness, and work life in an effort to promote the employee value proposition. She also works in close partnership with the company benefits team through the coordination of employee assistance program, seminars, and webinars. A few examples of EAP programs that Erica has implemented are smoking cessation programs, which can be attended either in person or online. There are also employee nutritional courses that assist with the dissemination of information geared to inform employees about making proper nutritional decisions. Additionally, there are financial stability courses. These are implemented to assist in decreasing stress by reducing financial worries. And lastly, a program called Your Healthy Heart teaches employees about blood pressure and how to monitor your readings. Some of Erica's goals for the EAP programs are to get employees thinking about the issues and gain their interest in improving their lifestyle. For example, if you have someone who eats fast food frequently, clearly it is not good for their health and it will have a negative impact. In turn, if this employee were to notice a flyer walking through work and it grabbed their attention, about nutritional eating habits, it would hopefully get them thinking about their, the issue and gain their interest in possibly making a lifestyle change. Another goal is to educate employees on changes they can make to improve their overall mental and physical health. This is pretty self-explanatory and it states the obvious. Um, Another goal is to offer a wide variety of programs that are designed to fit many employee needs. At a large corporation like Verizon, Erica is constantly faced with the challenge of dealing with extremely diverse population. Uh, not only are there male and female employees, but there are also different cultures, ethnicities, and religious backgrounds to think about. And they require specific programs formulated to fit their needs. Uh, so she is tasked with the responsibility to individualize programs geared to meet the needs of her corporation. And lastly, uh, disseminate the information via seminars, webinars, or personal counseling seminars with employees. Um, Erica and the EAP department have made the information easily accessible for their employees, whether someone wants to attend a seminar with coworkers or maybe watch a webinar in the comfort of their own home, or discuss the matter in private with a counselor. It is totally and entirely up to the employee to decide what, what fits best for them. While interviewing with Erica, she expressed her thoughts and opinions on her career and the health education field. My first question for her was, what she enjoys most about being a health educator? Her response was that she enjoys having the ability to help people make the small changes in their life that hopefully add up over time in order, in order for them to live a healthy life. I agree, I agree with her because being in the health education field is all about helping people. I love that I can be the catalyst in helping someone adopt a healthy behavior change and successfully see it through. 
That to me is what it's about. My next question for her was, what, what does she feel her biggest challenge is as a health educator? She said that you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. As a health educator, we have the ability to provide people with the tools necessary to make a positive change. This would include things like uh, nutrition plans, fitness programs, and be that external motivation. However, to be successful, someone needs to possess the self-motivation and the willingness to maintain the course needed in order to reach that goal. So going back to her quote, how you can lead a horse to water but you cannot make them drink, I can provide you with all the tools necessary and, and all the information you need to know in order to make that change happen, but you need to be the one to follow through with it and, and, and actually nail it, make it happen. You need to be the one to do it. Um, Moving on, the next question I asked her was what she felt was the biggest advancement has been within health education. She, she believes that the most important gains have been in the area of educating our children on making informative nutritional choices. I agree with the importance of this advancement and this is evident within our nation's school system. School lunches have changed over, over the years from at one time being fried fish sticks and french fries to now having the more, more nutritious options like veggies and fruit. Um, this has become a great priority within our country displayed through programs such as the Healthy Kids Movement. Uh, moving on, I asked her uh, her, I also asked her now her opinion on what she felt would be important, an important lesson to teach uh, our, our children. Um, and starting with elementary school, she said she would teach nutrition. Uh, I feel that this is a very, it's a great lesson to teach the young children because at this age, it's easier to instill healthier eating habits before poor nutrition is exposed. It's all over, especially in schools. And hopefully this would help them make easier decisions later on in life and hopefully follow through. For middle school, she would have a lesson on body image. This is a very important topic for this age group because at this age, their bodies are experiencing many changes and they, can, they, they do face self-esteem issues. And it clearly stems from TV, you know, reality TV, social media, and it's, they have to be taught that it's, that's not the way life is, it's not reality, and it, they have to be taught the importance of accepting who you are as a person and the way you look. Um, lastly, she, for high school, she would teach a lesson about sex education. This is highly appropriate because high school students need to understand the dangers of STDs and, and, and they need to gain that knowledge on how to practice safe sex. If that's what they're going to do, you know, they, they, need, they need to get that information. Um, this lesson would also be very beneficial in hopefully decreasing the number of unplanned pregnancies for teenagers. I then continued to ask her, what target population does she enjoy working with most? She explained that she enjoys working with the everyday working people in the corporate world. And this is because she feels like she can relate to their lifestyle and she understands how difficult it can be at times to balance work and family and personal life, as well as personal health. Um, with that said, she enjoys developing programs which can be easily introduced into their daily routine and maintained without putting a strain on their everyday life. The last question I asked Erica was to list four words that she thinks best describes teaching and health education. The first word she said was that it was challenging. And going back to that last quote she said on the last slide, 
Uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. It's frustrating and challenging as a health educator um, to, to give someone the resources, the tools, all the information that they need in order to make a change successful. And then once it's time for them to make that change, it's out of your control and you know all you could do is hope that they'll follow through with it and successfully accomplish it um, and if not you know you just have to be there to help help them back up and continue on the process but that is I, I do believe also that is frustrating and, and challenging um, the next word she listed was rewarding um, it can be very rewarding on the flip side it can be very rewarding to witness your clients make the needed behavior changes and successfully adapt to a new lifestyle. And by seeing this happen, we as health educators gain that satisfaction that our program, motivation, and determination finally paid off. Um, the third word she used was that it was complex. There are many aspects and fundamentals that need to be possessed in order to make a successful health educator. Um, we are constantly faced with the challenge of conquering many different issues for all types of people and having a limited amount of programs is not sufficient enough to be to be successful in our in our complex profession and what might what might work for one might not work for another and lastly the last word she used was that it was fun and that was actually she was really excited about this one um, and really, it's about doing what you love. A health educator enters this, this field because they already possess the, the desire to lead a healthy lifestyle. That desire is already in them, and it then translates into that motivation to help others do the same. Erica Anderson's Legacy and Philosophy. Her philosophy is that she believes in doing a little bit a lot of the time rather than doing a lot a little bit. What she means by this is that she wants to provide her clients with the information needed to make a behavioral change at a gradual pace. She wants them to understand that change is a process and that it takes time. And in other words, it's not so much of a sprint, more of a marathon. The last thing I asked Erica was that if, if you were to leave the health education profession, what would you want your legacy to be? She said that she would want her coworkers and clients to remember her for believing that it's not about one big thing, it's about a bunch of little things that add up to something great. It was an absolute pleasure being able to interview Erica Anderson. She is an insightful and intelligent individual who is a great asset to the health education field. One day I strive to be in a position such as hers and possess the skills, knowledge, and experience to make me just as successful. Thank you.